also want to talk about five kinds of conservatives. Um, there are um, a lot of conservatives as well as liberals, and there's a wide spectrum of conservatism. Rather than putting it onto a uh, matrix, I want to talk about it as a spectrum. And that goes from progressive conservatives all the way back to radical conservatives on the other end. Okay, so we'll talk about these one at a time. The progressive conservative says, I, I'm willing to march into the brave new world, as uh, uh, George Bush Sr. said. Um, but I want to do so carefully. Okay, so <clears throat> we may be changing things, but we're doing so with a conservative spirit that says, let's not move too quickly. Let's make sure that we measure twice before we cut once. And let's make sure that we go slowly following the culture. Okay? That's the progressive conservative. Um, then there is the status quo conservative, for lack of another term. Status quo conservative says, is the only true conservative, um, because what they're trying to do is conserve what is right now. We are conserving, we are stopping, this is a good place, this is where we want to be. So um, uh, let's not make any changes. Uh, then there's the regressive conservative, and that's an unfortunate uh, terminology, but it works for me, because if you have a progressive, and you need to have a regressive conservative. Um, that's the person who says, let's restore to what we had before. It's not right where we are today, let's go back. And so we had school prayer until 1961. Let's go back to that. We had it good in uh, Reagan's day uh, as president. Um, church music was right in the 1950s, and uh, since then we've been following the world, and it hasn't sounded good. So let's go back and uh, restore what we used to have. Um, then there is the historic conservative who says to the uh, regressive conservative, you haven't gone back far enough. It, life wasn't good just because we had prayer in schools. What we need to do is go back to the one-room schoolhouse where generations are affecting one another and there was discipline and, and uh, um, small schools and children were uh, learning in a more private uh, environment. Let's not go back to Reagan. Uh, there were lots of problems during Reagan's day, but let's go back to Lincoln. He was the beginning of the, the conservative party, the, the uh, Republicans. But let's not go back to the uh, 1950s and the music of the 1950s. It was the movement of the 1800s that uh, we're wanting to capture. Um, and, and then there are not only the historic conservatives, but there are the radical conservatives who say, no, 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 you are all wrong. It's not a matter of keeping where we are. It's not a matter of going back 30 years. It's not a matter of going back to, um, you know, four generations ago. It's a matter of going back to original intent. So uh, it's not a one-room schoolhouse or school prayer. It's homeschooling. It's not... Um, uh, Reagan or Lincoln, it's the Constitution. Let's go back to the Constitution and let's restore primitive Christianity, not the Christianity of America in the 1800s or the 1950s, but rather um, let's, let's be radical and do a house church or something like that. So um, now here is what is interesting about this. When we get to the point of being a radical conservative, it's easy to get that confused with a liberal. Let me explain why. See, if you're a moderate, whether a conservative or a liberal, uh, if you're moderate in the middle of the road, you're close to one another. You might be on one side of the fence or the other side of the fence, but you're, you're very close to one another. But as we start to become more radical in those, the um, more radical liberals are very much wanting change. The more radical conservatives are wanting to go the other direction. Uh, and not change anything or uh, change in a, in a backwards way. So one's trying to move forward, the other's trying to move backwards, and, and they're very far away from each other. Ironically, as we get all the way down here to the radical liberal, and we come all the way back here to the radical conservative, they are both a long way away from where we are right now, from the status quo. And uh, they, they are wanting change, radical change to happen. And so, like in the realm of uh, politics, they might uh, together agree on libertarianism. One side, because they like the idea of uh, uh, having availability of drugs. Um, 
coming from a very uh, liberal perspective, you know, the government shouldn't have this war on drugs. The other side, from a very conservative perspective, that says we must preserve the Constitution and we don't have a constitutional right to, to do this or that. So they might come to agreement on some certain issues because they, they both want to be uh, radical in their position. Anyway, interesting. Sometimes uh, politics makes strange bedfellows, and sometimes theology will do that also. So let's apply that just a little bit. Um, there are times in theology when uh, the liberal says, uh, baptism, uh, who knows what uh, causes the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, or if there is a Holy Spirit, or, or whatever it might be. So uh, whatever your situation is, uh, you know, that's good with me. The conservative says, no, according to the tradition that I have in my church, um, this is how we believe baptism to be. Um, the radical conservative might say, I have a sacred duty to speak where Scripture speaks, and if Scripture does not address this very clearly, then I simply can't uh, talk about it. And uh, so the radical conservative might wind up with the same position as the radical liberal. They both wind, might wind up um, as part of the emerging church.